What is going on guys? Welcome back. In today's video, we're going to learn how to build a web crawler in Python using Scrapey. So let us get right into it. Now, before we get started with the actual tutorial, I would like to mention that this video was sponsored by IP Royal, and I encourage you to not skip that part because I think the company is very relevant to the project that we're going to build in this video today. In a nutshell, we're going to build a web crawler today, and when you're working on large-scale professional web scraping web crawling projects, you will encounter the problem of getting blocked and banned from certain websites because your IP address is sending too many requests and sending requests too frequently to scrape the website. How to circumvent that is you use proxy servers that allow you to send the requests through them. So you send the requests via the proxy servers to get the responses also via the proxy servers. And if you use multiple of those proxy servers, you can rotate them and you can send the requests from multiple different locations and IP addresses, making it um, very, very unlikely that your IP address is going to get banned. And the problem with all these free proxy server lists out there is that they're unreliable, unsafe, slow, and most of the time already banned because they're not trusted, because they're mainstream, because everyone uses them, because they're free. And I would not trust uh, a free proxy server because I always think, what are they gaining from offering that service to me for offering me for free to send my connection through them? That's, that's always a little bit suspicious which is why you wanna use a professional company like IP Royal. They provide multiple proxy services. You can see they have over 2.8 million IP addresses. And if you go to their website, iproyal.com, you will also find a link in the description down below. You can see what different types of proxies they offer, the use cases of their services, and also all the locations that you can use when using their proxy servers. And this is the best way to to, to um, do a large scale professional web scraping and web crawling. For hobby projects, this might be a little bit overkill, but if you wanna send multiple requests and if you wanna send them frequently and you don't wanna get banned from your own IP address and you also wanna use uh, trusted servers, trusted IP addresses in a professional service that's reliable and always there, you wanna use a professional service like IP Royals. So you might wanna check them out in the description down below. There's a limited offer. You can get 50% off your residential proxy plan using the Neural9 coupon code. All right, now let us get started by briefly talking about the differences between web scraping and web crawling. In today's video, we're going to build a web crawler, but we're also going to do some web scraping. And those two concepts are very connected and oftentimes combined, but they are different concepts and they have different use cases. The main goal of web scraping is to extract data from websites, whereas the main goal of web crawling is to find links, find URLs, find branches off a given website. And before we get too technical with the explanation here, I'm going to give you some examples. We're going to use in this video today, the books.toscrape.com website, which is a web scraping slash web crawling website. So it's made to be scraped uh, or to be crawled. And one typical web scraping task on this website would be, for example, to take a page like this one where we have a lot of information, we have a warning, we have results, we have a title, we have categories, um, and to extract only the data that we care about. So for example, we can see that we have a bunch of books listed, we can see that there is a title, we can see that there is a price and the information about the availability. And a web scraping task, for example, would be to go through all the pages like religion, historical fiction, classics, philosophy, and so on, and to extract the titles and the prices of the books. This, this would be one use case, or also the ratings, for example. And to then take this data and do something with it. For example, some data science, data analysis, storing it in a data frame, storing it in a database, just storing, uh, storing it somewhere, or doing something with it. Uh, that would be a web scraping task, to extract actual information from the website. A web crawling task, on the other hand, would be to find URLs, to find links that match a certain pattern. For example, we can see that when we click on any of these categories here, we have a certain pattern uh, in the URL, which is slash catalog slash category, and every category has this pattern in, um, in the URL. But when we click on a book, for example, we only have slash catalog, but not slash category. So one web crawling task would be to instruct the crawler to find all the links, all the URLs that have this catalog slash um, category pattern in them. And uh, the web crawler would then follow the available links to find more of those uh, category links. That would be the idea of a web crawler. Um, in this case, this would be quite trivial because we have a sidebar where all the categories are listed, but in practice, in a real world, 
uh, website, in a production website, you will oftentimes have something like maybe the top 10 categories that you can click on. And then there are 100 more categories that you have to find by, for example, uh, going to a book. And then maybe you have on another website here, 10 categories, 10 secondary categories that this book also belongs to, and then you can find more of them. So you could instruct a crawler to go all the different um, to go into all the different book pages to find all the secondary categories and to then collect all the pages that are category pages, that would be a web crawling task, finding URLs, finding links, and a web scraping task would be for example, to go to the book page, extract the title, extract the price, extract the availability, the rating, and do something with that information afterwards. Now in this video today, we're going to use a Python package called Scrapey, which is a web scraping slash web crawling framework. So not just a simple library or module, but an actual framework, it creates a new project with multiple Python files with settings files and middleware files. It's a little bit like Django, but not for web applications, but for web scraping and web crawling projects. So if we want to use Scrapey, we need to first install it, we need to open up a command line and we need to say pip install Scrapey. And once it's installed, we can use it in the command line to create a new project. So I close this here, I go into my terminal inside of PyCharm, I'm going to navigate to the working directory. And then when you are in the directory that you want to be working in, uh, you're going to say scrapey start project. And in this case, I'm going to give it the name neural crawling, you can choose whatever name you want. And once you have that once the project is created, you can see that in your chosen directory, you now have uh, a new directory with the project name inside of that directory, you have another directory with the same name, as well as a config file. And inside of that directory, you have a bunch of different Python files, items, middlewares, pipelines, settings, some of them will be covered later on in the video. But the most important directory here is the spiders directory. Spiders are essentially the constructs that we use for the actual web scraping for the actual web crawling. And we can create our own custom spiders to define what we want to do to define the crawling behavior to define what URLs we're interested in, and to extract certain information from the individual sites. Um, so what we're going to do first is we're going to right click here, we're going to create a new Python file, and we're going to call this for example, crawling underscore spider. And in here, we're going to start with some imports, we're going to say from scrapey dot spiders, we're going to import the crawl spider as a base class. So we're going to inherit from this class here, we're going to also import the rule class so that we can specify some rules for choosing URLs and links. And we're also going to say from scrapey dot link extractors, we want to import link extractor, obviously, in order to extract links. And then we want to create a new class, which is going to be our custom spider class. And I'm going to call this for example, now crawling. Come on, crawling spider, you just don't want to call this crawl spider, because that is already the name of the class that we're importing, and also inheriting from so give it a name that is not already imported or not already used, in my case, crawling spider, and this is going to inherit from the crawl spider class. Now what we want to do here first is we want to set a name, we want to assign a name to the spider. So we want to say name equals. And then we want to say, for example, my fancy crawler, or something like that. And this is now the identifier of this spider, when we want to use this spider for crawling, we're going to refer to it using that name, you can choose whatever name you want. I'm actually going to change this now to just my crawler. I uh, don't want to type too much here. And this is now the name that we provide in the command line, because what we're going to do later on is we're going to say scrapey crawl, and we need to provide a spider in my case, now my crawler. Uh, and of course, this needs to be executed in the project. So we need to first change the directory, and then we can say scrapey crawl, and then my crawler, and this will execute the strategy of the crawling and scraping right now it doesn't do anything. But this is the identifier of that particular class. Now, next, we're going to allow certain domains. So we're going to say allowed underscore domains is going to be a list of domains that we want to accept uh, for our links for our crawling and scraping. So since we're working with this page here, books.toscrape.com, the only URL that we're interested in is the to scrape.com URL. So we don't want to go to any links that are on any other domains, we don't want to go to Facebook, we don't want to go to YouTube, Amazon or something, we want to stay on to scrape.com. So this is the only allowed domain here. 
And then we're also going to specify a start URL because we need to have a base base point to start from. We cannot just say we're nowhere, start scraping. We need to have one page that we start at to find all the links there, to analyze the links, to follow the links, then to go to those pages to find links there, uh, links there and so on. So we have to provide a starting point. In this case, I'm just going to say HTTP books dot to scrape dot com. That is going to be the starting page. And from here, we're going to try to find additional links. And what links we want to find is going to, de to be defined by our rules. So we're going to say now rules equals, and we're going to use normal parentheses to specify a bunch of different rules. So this is going to be a tuple of rules. And we're going to start with a simple rule saying that we want to get the links. So we're going to add a link link extractor instance here. And we're going to allow for the following pattern, we're going to allow all the links that have the pattern catalog slash category. Now, when we go to the page, remember, remember, when we click on the individual categories, we can see they all have catalog category and then something else. And when I click on a book, it doesn't have category, it only has catalog. So by using that rule, that filtering rule, we should only be able to find, um, find categories. So this should only give us categories. And one important thing here is this is a tuple right now, this is just a single element. So if we want to make this a tuple, this is a little Python detail that you need to take care of. If you want this to be a tuple, you need to add uh, an additional comma in the end when it's just one element. If you have multiple elements, you can just um, add one comma or commas in between the individual rules. But if you have just one rule, you need to add an additional comma in the end. Otherwise, it's not going to be recognized as a tuple. So now we have our crawling spider that allows for two scrape.com domains, or URLs that have that domain. Uh, it starts at this URL and looks for all the links that contain catalog category. That's the basic idea, we can already go ahead now and execute this crawler. So we can go to um, current and neural crawling and then scrapey crawl my crawler. And this should find now all the different it doesn't what's the problem here start URL. Oh, start URLs. This has to be plural. There you go. And now you can see it starts finding all these URLs. So it gets the category. Where do we have it, it gets the category nonfiction, it gets uh, fiction and children's books and all that. So it extracts all the URLs that have this pattern that it can find on the website. So as you can see, this is, um, this works quite well, every URL that has this pattern in it will be extracted. Uh, but maybe we want to also extract the individual books. And maybe we want to have some information from those books. Now, before we go any further in the actual rules here, I want to show you one nice feature of Scrapey, which is using the shell. So we can use the shell interactively in the command line to extract certain things from the website to see, for example, what elements we get when we try something. And let me just open up here my prepared example so that I don't do anything stupid here. Uh, we're going to just take this URL here, we're going to copy it. And in the command line, I'm now going to say, scrapey shell, and I'm going to enter this URL. So it's going to navigate to that page, it's going to open up scrapey interactively here. Uh, and it crawled the web page. So it's already opened up in scrapey. And now I can interactively uh, get the response and do something with it. So I have this response object here. response, And this is the response It's a 200. So successful and it got this page here. And now what I can do is I can use the CSS function to get certain elements based on their CSS class. So I can say response dot CSS, and I want to have all the H ones. So all the heading one elements, as you can see, in this case, this is just all products. It's just that. Uh, but for example, I might also want to get all these links. So I might click on inspect here, I'm going to see okay, this is um, an A element, or maybe I'm interested in the fact that this is an H three. So a heading three, I can go ahead into PyCharm, I can do again, response dot CSS, H three. And then I will get all these H three elements with the respective links inside them. We can also do something else. So I can also say here, not just get the response or the selector, I can also call the get function on that. 
uh, to get the actual HTML code. So I get the actual content of that. Um, or I can also say I want to get um, the text. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to get text here. But we can say here, for example, h3 and then colon colon text to get the actual text. In this case, it doesn't work. I think for h1, it should work because h1 has some text directly in it. Um, but I can do the same thing here for a. Uh, the problem with get is that it only gets one element. So if I want to get all of them, I can say get all. Uh, what was the function? get all but with a lowercase a, and then I'm going to get all the individual links with the text that is inside of them. So you can play around with this shell interactively to see what you have to do to get certain elements. And then you can build your rules and your strategies based on that. Um, what can we do um, as well, we can also specify classes. So for example, uh, somewhere on the page, we should have page header, we can also say that we want to get the page header instead of just um, a specific element like h1, we can just get uh, the class the CSS class. So I can say, for example, response.css. And I can say dot in parentheses, uh, not in parentheses and quotations, dot page dash header. And then I can say get and then I will get this element here as well. So I can also filter for class. Um, we can also use regex. And maybe one last thing that I want to show you is we can also use xpath. So I can say xpath. Uh, give me all the links and from those links, their text. So I will get this and I will just say dot extract. And then I get the same result as before when we got the text of the links. So if you want to know more about XPath, I have a tutorial on that on my channel already, you might want to look that up. But this is what you can do here interactively in the command line. Now let's go ahead and implement that in our spider. Let's say we're looking for specific things in our spider and we don't want to just um, play around interactively. We want to say get all the books, for example, get all the categories and do certain things with them. So I can define a second rule here where I say now what I want to do is I want to allow for all the URLs that have catalog in them, but I want to deny all the URLs that have category in them. So here, we're interested in all the catalog links that do not have category in them. So we're not going to find any categories, but we want to find all the other URLs that also contain catalog in them. And with those results, what we want to do here uh, is we're going to define a callback, we want to say, okay, when you find these URLs, we want to refer them to a function called parse underscore item, we pass this function here as a string. This function needs to now be defined or this method needs to now be defined here in this class. And this method will handle all the instances that are found by this rule here. So we're going to say here def parse item self and response. And then we can decide now how to scrape these links. So what we do here is we crawl these links, we use the crawler to find all these links that fit that rule. And then we take those and we feed them into the parse item to extract something from them. So we do crawling here and web scraping here. Um, and what we want to do now is we want to get the title, the price and the availability of the items. So what's the problem here? Indented? What's the problem? Okay, we're going to figure that out as we go. Uh, but what we want to do now is we want to go to the actual book pages. We want to extract the title, we want to extract the uh, the price and the availability here. So we want to get this number here, essentially. Um, how do we do that? Let's right click on these things. We're going to see that they have certain classes. So if I go to the title, you can see it's um, an h1 inside of product main. So we have product main the, the whole diff box around it. Inside of product main, the h1 is the title the price color is the price. So the the p tag with the class price color is the price itself. And the in stock availability um, has also some text in it, showing the availability. So what we're going to do here is we're going to yield the results, we're going to use the yield keyword, because we want to have a generator here. Um, and not, uh, we don't want to have um, a return value we want to have a generator so that we get the items here. So we need to provide the yield and not the return keyword. And we're going to uh, to yield a dictionary, which is going to say the title of our book is going to be response 
CSS. This is now exactly what we did in the shell interactively. We're going to say that we want to have the product main. So product underscore main class. And below that, we want to have the H1. And of that H1, we want to have the text. This is the title of the book. We want to get that. Then the price is going to be response.css. We just want to get the thing where we have the price color class. And from that, we want to get the text, get that as well. And for the last one, we want to say the availability is going to be response.css. I want to get dot availability. And from that we want to get the text. So um, because we have here the availability in stock and availability are two classes, separate classes. So we can just go for availability. And we have here the actual content. So we're going to say from that get the problem here is though, um, we're going to get two results or I think three results. And what we want to do here is we want to actually get the second one. So this is just particular for that page. This is something that I tried already in the prepared code. Uh, we're going to get multiple results as far as I remember. And we want to just get uh, the the third instance here. So index two. That is what we're yielding here. Now let me just figure out briefly what the problem is here. Let me just compare we have is it the indentation? I don't believe that. What is it rules equals rule link extractor? What's the problem here? Or do I need just another comma? No, that does not seem to be the case. Okay, it seems like this block here is just not indented properly. So I'm gonna just press tab here. Tab, 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 and now it should be working. So we now have the rules that we want to find all the categories. And we also want to find all the catalog links that don't have category uh, in their URL for those who want to pass those responses to the parse item function here we extract title price availability. And that is our scraper. So this is already our spider. We're going to now open up the terminal and we're going to say um, navigate to the directory and we're all crawling. Now scrapey and then crawl my crawler. But what we're going to do now, or before we do that, let's just run this to see the results. And then we're going to learn how to export the results into a JSON file. So what you can see here now is it scrapes all the books, all the categories as well. But you can see what it does here, it goes through all the instances that it can find, it will take probably some time. And then in the end, we're going to uh, have the results have the extracted values for all these instances. So maybe I can terminate this. And you can see here when I scroll up that we have these dictionaries here all the time. So we have title, we have price and we have availability. Availability doesn't seem to work. So we might have to fix that here. Maybe we have to change the index. Um, does it work for some instances? I'm not sure. We're going to check that out later on. But what we want to do now before we run all this here on the screen is we want to save this in a JSON file. So we want to say here, scrapey crawl my crawler and then dash O and then output dot JSON, for example. And this will then take all the scraped information and output it into the JSON file here uh, so that we can analyze it later on. So once this is done, we can open up the JSON file and we can see here all this information that we created. We have the title, we have the price. As I said, the availability doesn't work yet. We're going to figure out why that is here in a second. But you can see all these instances that we scraped. This is all the information that we got from the crawling and scraping. We found all the books by using the web crawling by using the rule here, this one, and then we used the parse item method to get these dictionaries to get these JSON uh, objects here with the information. Now to find out why the availability doesn't work, let's just go ahead and open up the page interactively or one page interactively like this one. Uh, we're going to say scrapey shell and this page here. And then we're going to just do exactly what we did here, we're going to send a say response dot CSS dot availability text 
and then two dot get. And in this case, it says out of range, this should not be the case. Let's just go with get. Here we have um, backslash and let's go with the get all. And here we can say uh, see we have zero. Okay, this is one. Now I think when I prepared the video, I got a different result. I'm not sure but now we should be able to just say one dot get and then we would have to do some string formatting, we would have to remove all the backslash ends and we would have to remove all the white spaces and then we should be able to get just this string here. So maybe let's go with one, get this and then do a replace. If this is a string, I hope this is a string, replace all the backslash ends with nothing, and then maybe also replace the white spaces with nothing. Maybe that will work. Let's see if that works. I'm not sure. Let's just exit here from the shell. And let's crawl again. So I'm going to call my crawler again, output JSON. Here we have a problem. What's the problem here line 20. I forgot to close something as it seems. What is that? Um, we get the instance we replace we replace Oh, I think I used some vim bindings accidentally here. This should suffice. Let's run this again. And now it starts scraping again, let's just break here to see what happens. And we now have availability in stock 16 available. So you can see we also remove the white spaces in here, but you can play around with the string formatting. That's not necessarily the topic of this video. But you can now see that it extracts the correct information, we just had to change this from two to one. And we had to replace some some data some some line breaks with nothing and some spaces with nothing. And then you can also use some regex to only get the numerical values and stuff like that if you want to have the raw number. But this is how you can do that here you define the crawling here to find the scraping mechanisms and then you can just go through the web page automatically to find uh, all the pages that can be interesting to go to those pages and for the respective categories, you can define how they are parsed. So here we just get the categories. Right now you can see we get the category links here if we're interested in them, but we only parse the book. So only the pages where category is not part of the URL. Now if we go to output JSON, you can see this is still not properly done. Why is that? I think this is just an updating problem. Or maybe it just appended the results. Yeah, I think that's a problem. It depends the results. So you have to replace the JSON file every time. But you can see now the data looks better. We have the title, we have the price and we have this availability here. And again, if you do some more string formatting, you will be able to just get rid of in stock and, and available and all that you can just end up with a number here. Now one problem that you might encounter when doing web scraping or web crawling, especially if you're doing large scale web scraping or web crawling is you might get blocked from certain pages, they recognize your IP address, you're sending too many requests, or you're sending them too frequently, or they recognize that you're web scraping and they don't want that they can just block you and you are no longer able to access the site from your IP address. In order to prevent that what you can do is you can use proxy servers, you can use some uh, server in between you and the site you want to scrape you send a request to that proxy server, the proxy server sends the request from their IP address or with their IP address to that website, and then you get the response back via the proxy server as well. And when you use multiple proxy servers, you have multiple IP addresses, and it's not that likely that you're going to be blocked by certain websites. And this is also why the sponsor of this video today might be useful to you guys IP Royal offers professional proxy servers. Now, of course, there are also lists of free proxy servers online that you can find you can just um, look for free proxy servers, and then you're going to find a list of maybe available, maybe unavailable servers. The problem is those are not reliable, those are oftentimes slow. And I always ask myself the question, why are they giving the service away for free? What is the benefit for them for providing you with a free proxy server? I, I don't trust that too much. So if you're doing some large scale professional web scraping, you want to use professional proxy servers and IP Royal offers them, you can check them out in the link in the description down below. Um, and how do we do that now here in Scrapey? It's actually quite simple. There are many ways one way is also to 
manipulate the environment variable HTTP proxy, but we're going to go a different way here. Uh, we're going to define here a constant, we're going to call this proxy underscore server, and we can provide the proxy server IP address here. Now I'm not going to provide an actual IP address here. This is just I'm showing you just how this is done. Here you would enter IP address, or maybe as a placeholder, let's just go with localhost. So here you would add the IP address of the proxy server. Then what you want to do is you want to go to the settings py file to this file here and you want to find the downloader middlewares um, commented out section here. So we're going to uncomment this section. And you can see we have your downloader middlewares equals and we have the neural crawling downloader middleware, we also want to add here the scrapey dot downloader middlewares dot HTTP proxy dot HTTP proxy middleware, and we want to set this to one, this basically enables the use of proxies. And in here, so so those are the two things that we need to have here. First of all, we need to uncomment this thing. Second of all, we need to um, add this line of code here. Let me just zoom in a little bit so that you can see that. And then in addition to that, we want to go to middlewares.py. We want to go down to the downloader middleware. Uh, where is it? There you go to this one, which is this one. So we activate it here. And we can now manipulate the process of the request sending of the request processing in here by adding the proxy server. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this process request function. And we're going to just say in here, request dot meta, let me just zoom in again, in here, we're going to say request meta. Um, and we're going to say the proxy of the request is going to be set to whatever proxy we chose. So 127001. Localhost doesn't work, obviously. But once you have a proxy, either a professional proxy, for example, from IP Royal or a free proxy that you want to play around with that you found online, you can just pass it here. And by specifying it here as a proxy server by specifying it here in the process request method inside of the downloader middleware, which we activated in the settings file, and we also added this here. Um, with that, now the requests are going to be sent uh, from the proxy or via the proxy. And I think if I try to do this right now, we should see that it doesn't work, obviously. So let me just navigate here to the directory. Scrapey crawl my crawler. This should not work because we don't have this. Um, well, this is not a proxy server. So as you can see, it doesn't work, no connection could be made. But if you have a functioning proxy server in there, it's going to work, it's going to send a request via that proxy server. And if you rotate them, if you have multiple proxy servers, you can also prevent getting blocked. And in addition to that, probably don't spam the websites, only scrape the stuff that is responsible and ethical. So don't uh, just scrape massively all the time, just respect the resources of the site. But if you want to get some information here and there, you can do that. And if you don't want to get blocked, just because they're recognized, you're scraping, you can use proxy servers like that. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something. Don't forget to check out the sponsor of this video, IP Royal, you'll find a link in the description down below, as well as a coupon code neural nine, which will give you 50% of the Royal residential proxy, and only for a limited amount of time. So if you are interested in that offer, you should sign up as soon as possible with a coupon code. Uh, because as I said, it's only available for a limited amount of time and it will save you half of the money if you sign up for that plan. Other than that, also let me know in the comment section down below if you like this video or not. And as always, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and 